Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. I got a new video and this one is going to be about doing fades um, and how to control your air, your hair dryer, which can be tricky sometimes, especially if you're new. So before I start talking too much about that, I'm just putting down um, some ink here. Now, I might add more ink later, but this is just sort of to get started. I've put down some uh, Copic colors. Um, it's moss green and an orange, which I can't remember the name right now, but I'll leave it for you in the description. It might be called Sunset. I'm not sure. I've also put down a tiny bit of Copic black. And once we get started, I'm going to add some brass. Um, trying to do these fades are tricky sometimes. Now here I'm just adding a little isopropyl, some brass, and then I'm going to drag the isopropyl out. And we're going to start blowing the ink and the isopropyl sort of back and forth. Now, you, if you've seen my other videos, you know that um, one of my favorite ways to make fades is not using my hairdryer, but picking up the paper and sort of tilting the ink around in the isopropyl. I, I love that way of doing it, but um, the shapes that I want to do in this piece are actually easier to do um, when I'm using my, my uh, hair dryer, my new hair dryer, which I'm getting more and more used to. Um, it's a Remington hair dryer, and um, I like it now. I didn't at first, but I like it now. Now, we're going to do one. I wasn't actually happy with the first one I did because it wasn't a fade, but here you can see I'm going to push the ink back and forth a couple of times. And you, you, I mean, two, three times, you can do more if you want, but I want it to fade out. So I'm going to dry it in towards the middle when I've pushed it back and forth a couple of times. Now, right now, I'm not paying too much attention to how it looks sort of in the center of the piece. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. Now, that fade turned out pretty well. I'm going to go over to the black and, again, drag out the ISO and start moving it back and forth. Now, because I put these colors down first, the black is mixing now with the orange and it's going to create a nice brown shade, I hope. I added a little extra ISO here at the end because that is how you get it to fade. If you have mixed it in too much when you start blowing it back and forth, it won't fade. It will look like the first green one that I did. Um, it is sort of, I, how do I say this? Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It is tricky to know how many times to sort of blow it back and forth. You really need to try. And even though I, I do this technique a lot, it doesn't always work for me either. But the good thing is you can always dry it, add more ISO and try again which is what I'm going to do now with the green. I'm just adding a bit more ink because there was a lot of brass on that. I'm going to start working this again, slowly moving it back and forth and also mixing in a little bit with the orange, which I love because you can create so many new colors. Now what I want to talk about right here is when you blow it in towards the center. I want these to, well, not to end up all in the same place. That would be sort of almost impossible. But you can see me here sort of 
moving from left to right and in towards the middle. And by sort of doing that left to right, I, you can make the, the last bit of ink and isopropyl sort of pointy in towards the middle. If I just sort of blow from the end of the fade and in towards the middle, it's gonna be much wider. But by sort of moving it, the air from the left to the right, you can make it a, a little bit pointy, which is gonna help out with sort of the finish I want in the center. Now, like I said, you can't all make it end up in the exact same spot. Um, and, and that's not really what I want, but the pointy thing I kind of like. Now we're going to keep working around going into this beautiful, beautiful orange. Um, I like the green, the moss ranger and the orange together. Moss is my absolute favorite um, color. I, I don't know why I love it so much. And for this, um, I, I actually thought of using silver, um, but silver is a little tricky. You may have seen that in my uh, metallics video. Brass usually works with all colors and all techniques, so that's why I, I decided to use brass on this one, and I love it. Now here again, you can see some stuff didn't turn out so well. Once it's dry, add some more ISO and right here a little bit of brass and you just start again. Once you start moving it back and forth, you will sort of erase the bad stuff that you had just made. You will use that ink and, and just create a whole new fade. So when you do this, technique and, and try to make it fade, please don't be discouraged when they don't work out. You just try it and try again. Fades are tricky. Um, but there's sort of really no right and wrong, I mean, in, in how it ends up looking. It's good when you have different shapes and different sizes because that will make the end result much more interesting to look at. Now I added a bit too much brass here. I'm just dabbing a little bit of it off. Um, getting back to, to the hair dryer. Um, when you do this technique or other techniques, um, sort of the number one rule is don't put your hair dryer directly on top of your ink and isopropyl because it will blow all over the paper. You can't control it like that. Um, what you can see me doing here, I actually have the hair dryer quite close to the paper, but especially in the beginning of doing a fade, I have it around the ink. I will move it left to right and down at the bottom, quite close to the paper, but not with the air directly at the ink. Um, when the fade is sort of starting to dry and you only have a little bit of ISO and ink in the middle that hasn't dried yet, then you can it, it won't move as much and you can put the air a little more directly on it, but I still don't have the hair dryer right on top of it. I have it a bit further out so it doesn't become too powerful, but I point it more directly at the last bit of ink and ISO simply just to dry it. Um, if you are new to inks and you are still learning to control the air. I would suggest you start doing what I do, keep it close to the paper, moving it around the ink. If you find it difficult to control, 
keep the hair dryer a bit further away from the ink so that there is less power. And that way you can sort of start getting a bit more familiar with how it works for you. The more you get used to it, the closer you can get to the ink. But start out a, a bit further out um, if you are new. That will make it easier for you um, to control it. Now, I went back to the green and black one here because I wasn't quite happy with that one either. And that just shows you how, how many times you can just rework something if you're not happy with it. You can always go back and rework it. Um, another little tip when you're doing these fades and you are sort of pushing the ink in towards the middle. Sometimes, I do this a lot, I have a little too much um, isopropyl on there. And it will then move too much and it will take a long time to dry. So if you have sort of a big puddle in the middle when you just need to dry the last bit, just take um, a paper towel and just dab a little lot of a little off. Um, sometimes there's just too much ISO, and it will take forever to dry it, and it will move and mess up sort of the center of your piece. So now just doing one more with this black fade. Um, it was actually a little green at first. I think I added some of the moss, but. The Copic Black is, is it kind of takes over. It is um, the best black ink I have tried because it, it stays black. Um, but when you mix it with other colors, it, it sort of very easily takes over. Um, this is also one way to fix a bad fade. Just wipe some of it off with a paper towel. I'm going to try and do a tiny bit more because I wanted it to go a bit further out so that I kind of got two different shapes with this black um, black fade. Um, the black is really, really good with the orange if you want to get some of those brown uh, shades. Um, you can also get really nice brown when you use um, a gray. Um, cool gray or warm gray doesn't really matter but they work so well with orange now because there wasn't much of the green left in that other fade I'm gonna do one more and when I when I use the moss green I always add a little extra ink and a little less brass because the brass sort of tends to just take over the moss so that's a little trick for you. Now I'm, I'm starting to be pretty happy sort of with the shape of all of these. Um, I reworked some of them a couple of times, but now they all fade really, really nicely. So I think this is going to be the last one. Um, I like that I have some little, little gaps in between. Um, if you if you get them too closely together, it it, uh, it gives it a whole other look. Those little gaps, little white spaces in between the fades, I really, really like. I decided on this one that it needed a little more brass in the center. So what I'm doing is just adding one little drop. I'm taking my brush and I'm just going to um, connect it to some of the, the lines that were already there. Um, and it, it creates sort of a, a focal point, um, which I kind of really like. You can always add extra brass if you like, if you didn't really get enough. Um, I do this sometimes, uh, also because I'm just in love with brass and can you really get enough? I don't think so. Anyway, that's sort of um, what I wanted to show you with this video. I hope you find it helpful um, in sort of learning to use your air if you are new. Now, um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to see more of my videos. Thank you. Bye.